What is up everybody? Welcome to today's fast and fun Friday Run series where I'll be talking about how to run a faster half marathon. <laughs> Let's go! Oh yes, yes, yes. Welcome. My name is Donato and welcome to today's fast and fun Friday Run series. As I mentioned, I'll be talking about how to run a faster half marathon, but in particular, how to run a sub 90 minute marathon or those who work in longer periods of one hour, 30 minutes, half marathon. Yeah, let's go. Oh man, I'm so excited about this. But for a lot of you guys who may not have seen any of this series or are new to this channel, I would highly recommend to click on the link up there that gives a bit of a prelude and background about myself and where I've come from and how I'm gonna be, why I'm sharing some of the information here on the YouTubes with you guys. And it's all about being, getting faster and having fun at the same time. So there's a lot of information I'm gonna be going through and hopefully you find this useful. And if you are new here and you haven't yet done so, I would highly recommend click on the link down in the corner there and subscribe to this channel and maybe help me buy my next pizza. And for those of you who've been watching for quite a while, I really do appreciate your continued support on the channel. And maybe you'd like to buy me a coffee if you find any of this useful in some way. What do I mean by buying me a coffee? Well, there's a link below. There's a website called Coffee, K-O-F-I, and a slash Donato, there's a link below there. And you can just, Pay a couple of bucks and help support uh, help support my channel, which I really do appreciate. Thank you all so much. Yeah. So yes, the fast and fun series, which this one is about the half marathon, and a lot of you've been saying you want to keep it interactive. So yeah, let's make this interactive. So whilst I'm going to be going, to be going through a lot of information here on five key aspects regarding this. It's open to you guys as well, guys and gals, leave the comments below what works for you, what helps you run a faster half marathon. Yeah, I'd really love from you here to hear from you guys and help other people. So have a read at the comments below and see what's going on down there and feel free to comment on other people's comments and join in and that would be fantastic, yeah? Because at the end of the day, I'm only gonna be covering what I've learned in my short period of time of uh, running and also to help you guys. Now, if you've seen the prelude, you know that my uh, personal best of a half marathon is around 125, 126 minutes. So well under the 130, and I've run consistently a number of uh, half marathons as part of my training for marathons at a sub one hour 30. So how do I do that? What do I do? Well, there's five things that I uh, look at, and it's the same almost for any type of distance races, but there's five key areas that I'm gonna go through for the half marathon which is covering the training plan, diet, reduction of risk of injuries, race day strategy, and then I'll then summarize all the points and key points takes from that. So without further ado, yeah, let's get on to number one. And number one, the training. What training do we need to do to run a sub 90 minute half marathon or to run a faster half marathon well it's having a training plan yeah now rather than me put a link below of a particular type of training plan there's a whole myriad of training plans out there is find one that fits in with your particular lifestyle and i've said this on a number on all the others as well as we all have different lives you know for me working a nine to five ish type job and fitting my training in around that, Monday to Friday, um, it's important for me to work what works for me. So my runs and trainings, whilst I was starting just doing three training runs a week, I would find doing that two short runs during the weekdays work for me, and then I would have a long run on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, when I'm not uh, having to go to the office and work that. So that worked for me, but find what works for you. You may have different shift work, different shift patterns, family commitments, other types of things coming on where your long run may not be on a Saturday or Sunday, it might be on a different day. But I would highly recommend look, work a plan that works for you and the days it work for you. But in, in essence, it's two short runs, one long run. That's and keeping it consistent. Yeah, that's the key, key thing. If there's one thing I would say to take in terms of your training is 
consistency and the other C would be commitment, yeah? Be committed and consistent to that training plan, yeah? But the key type of runs, what do we need for the half marathon? It's a long way, 13.1 miles, 21.1 kilometers, is it 21.1 kilometers? Yep, it's a long way, a long way. So the key training runs that we need to do is the easy runs, easy runs, whether it be short easy runs, long easy runs is the easy runs because it's the easy runs that build our aerobic base that enables us to run longer distances now whilst for some people who run 100 miles 13 miles is not a long way but for us common men who marathons might be the longest 13 miles is a long long way and you need a tremendous aerobic level of fitness to run a faster half marathon yeah Makes sense? Now you're probably asking me, Donato, what is that easy pace? What's the easy run? People often refer to pace, I refer to effort. Now whilst an effort may equate to a particular pace on a certain type of terrain or type of weather, the pace may change but the effort will remain the same. I think there's a song about that, yeah, the song remains the same, but anyway, I digress. But um, yeah, it's, it's about the effort. Now. It's easy effort, and easy effort in a non-technical way is conversational. So if you're running with someone, you're able to converse whilst you're running, but at a pace that is still high enough. Not too easy, that it's such an easy conversation, and certainly not too fast, that it's difficult to converse, but easy conversation. If you want to get scientific, and you've got these wonderful watches, and a heart rate monitor, on the Garmin, I don't know what it's like on other platforms, on other watches, now it's zone two. So when you've keyed in on all your personal details and it works out your different heart rates and what you're doing and so on and so forth is zone two. Ooh, as I've got an itch in my eye. Got that? Zone two. So that's what builds your aerobic base and gets our endurance working for that because we need a great aerobic base and endurance to do a half marathon and to run it and uh, one hour 30, which is incredibly fast, yeah? And under that time, we need to do the right kind of training. And building that aerobic base is essential. Now, some training plans will have speed sessions in there, tempo runs, hill repeats, Kenyan hills, all that type of stuff. There's all sorts of buzzwords out there. Those are great if you want to have variety, and often variety is the spice of life, but it's not essential. I don't believe it's essential. The essential one to do is the easy runs and the base, what we call, may call base training. Those, that's the important one. That's why often the cornerstone to endurance running is the long run. Yeah, the long run is, is, if anything, the most important. You nail that and you can nail a great time in a particular training. So we got that, that's your training. Get your training plan and be consistent and committed to it. Number two, number two, yes, and this causes often the most controversy and debate, and that's the diet. What diet do we need to enable us to run a faster half marathon, to run a sub 90 minute, one hour 30 half marathon? What kind of diet do we need to do? Now, there's a hell of a lot of information out there, and I say strongly debated, and you can click on the link above where, um, I keep getting this itch on my nose, click on the link above where I uh, interviewed some top nutritionists uh, who, who coach some of the best athletes in the world and the common thing that came out in terms of diet is have a balanced whole food diet yeah so rather than any processed food and other types of foods is just a balanced diet yeah greens vegetables carb good mix of carbohydrates proteins fats good fats that is yeah have a balanced diet we don't need to change anything radically and um, if you want to follow some of the information and tips that is often given out for elite athletes then by all means go for it if that's what you want to do leave a comment below if that's what works for you let us know what do you eat on a regular basis because this is what we need to do day in day out and i refer back to the name of this series it's fast and fun that we want to have fun so for me i want to eat food that i enjoy eating so for me i love my pizzas I love my Chinese takeaways, I love my Indian food, I love Thai food, I love tapas, I love everything. I love my fry-ups, I particularly love my uh, English fry-ups, you know, the egg, bacon, sausages, beans, <gasps> love that. 
but I don't eat that stuff every day. I spread it out throughout the week, yeah? So, <laughs> do you get the message? I, I enjoy what I eat, yeah? And it's having a yeah, balanced, uh, balanced meal. So again, if you wanna leave some comments below what, what kind of diet, what food works for you, then I'd love to hear from uh, you guys, yeah? So that's the diet. Number three, number three, reduction of risk of injuries for a half marathon. It's essential yeah, that we try and reduce the risk of injuries whilst we can't stop all injuries. Sometimes they just happen, as I've found on a number of occasions. Um, but there's ways of reducing the risk of injuries because we want to get to race day fit, healthy and ready to go. Not injured, because obviously if we're injured, we're not going to be able to run a PB and, uh, or run a, the fastest half marathon we have done before. So re reduction of risks of injuries. There's two key things, and then I'll throw in a third one, which some people do add in, but two key things that I do. And that is that uh, before any, any uh, sessions, in particular if I'm doing any speed sessions or anything like that, is I do a dynamic warm up beforehand. Yes, a dynamic warm up before the actual workout. So I might go out for a 10, 15 minute easy run beforehand, and then I'll do some drills and, and get the, the movements going. So whether I do squats, leg swings, all that type of stuff to get the muscles warmed up, moving, ready to go for that session. And I say it's essential to do those before any kind of speed sessions, really essential. And then the second one, which I do after every, every training run, whether it be an easy training run or a speed session, is the static stretches, stretching out the muscles, because as we've done the training, the muscles tend to contract. So what we need to do is to stretch out those muscles from the static stretches, and there's a whole myriad of static stretches you can do. Do what works for you. Leave some comments below. What static stretches do, uh, do you do? after uh, your training runs, yeah? So those are the two key things that help reduce the risk of injuries. There are other things that you can do to reduce the risk of injuries, and that is um, strength work in the gym, uh, foam rolling, massages, all that type of stuff. But whilst they may not be essential, the first two are absolutely essential. The other three are great add-ons, again, to help reduce the risks, yeah? Okay. Number four, number four, race day strategy. So you've done the training, you've been following a, a great diet, yeah? You've been <laughs> reduced risk of injuries, you've got no injuries, you get into race day, you're ready to go. What's the strategy? You get up in the morning, let's say race starts at 9 a.m. For me, around 7 a.m. I'll have a light breakfast, yeah? Light breakfast, and because running at those speeds is pretty fast, so I don't want any food still processing or a large lump amount in my belly to uh, slow me down. So I'm gonna be going at a fast, fast uh, speed. So as I found on one particular race where I thought I could have a nice, little, just a teeny weeny little bite, it was about half an hour before the race and I got horrendous stomach cramps after about four miles. So I won't be doing that again, but that's me. For some people out there, and I'd love to hear from you guys, maybe you can get away with solids closer to the actual uh, race start time. Love to hear from you, and if you're running some 90 minutes yeah, with, with the uh, solid, love to hear from you on, on those. Now, race day strategy, it's, it's almost key, like with any distant type races, that uh, when we come to the start of the race, obviously you've had your light breakfast, so that's all there. You've, you've hydrated throughout the week, so you, you're nice and fully hydrated. You may be done a bit of carb load in a few days beforehand, so you're at the start of the race, ready to go, the gun goes off. What's the first thing you do? Apart from putting one foot in the other. First thing you don't do is you go sprinting off, yeah? Don't go off fast. Whilst there may not be the wall that we hit, like in a marathon distance, it's still a long way. 13.1 miles is a long way. And if you're going off at a sprint speed, which is not your race pace, faster than your race pace, it's gonna have a detrimental effect towards the end of the race in terms of uh, your speed. Now, some of you may get away with it, some of us may not, yeah? What I'm saying is go off easy for the first mile or two miles, get the muscles going, and then clock, clock in that pace that you've been training, working towards, knowing that you want to work at, and it's a particular effort, and sometimes the effort is taken by how we breathe, 
So the number of times we breathe in as the feet hit, hit the ground and breathing out. So it's having a comfortable, controlled pace. Now for a half marathon, some people still refer to as they do in a 10K or 5K, is comfortably uncomfortable. Now for a marathon, obviously that would be too fast, but for a half marathon, because we don't have the glycogen levels that can deplete, um, or we told it won't deplete for that particular distance, is that uh, we can run at a much faster pace than uh, the marathon and hold that. So it's comfortably uncomfortable. But if you were to split the race into sections, people race it in different ways. They use, some use negative splits, so they go off slower at the start and then speed up as they get through. Others, it's even splits, so they run the same pace all the way through. And others, I've heard of the gung-ho method, where they go off, not too fast, but they go off fast, faster than they really think, try and bank in some miles, and then hang on for dear life for the last few miles, which can work for some. I wouldn't recommend that, but it can work for some. I'd love to hear from you guys, if there's any of you that do that uh, third gung-ho method, where you run as fast as you can for the first sort of 10 miles and then hang on for the last three, or 3.1. But uh, So for me, the best race strategy that I've found is running at a steady pace and then pick up towards the end and uh, go with that, yeah? So guys, number five in summary for all those four points that uh, I've raised, whether it be the training, the diet, the reduction of risks of injuries, or the actual race day strategy, each of those four are all important as each other. And it's important to, for me, what I do is treat the whole thing in a holistic way. It's not just about the training, it's not just about the running, or it's not just about the food, it's the whole thing, the recovery. In fact, you could say that recovery is an essential part of the training, but it's important to look at all those aspects. And hopefully, you know, throughout time, you will get quicker and you will get to that sub one hour 30 marathon and beyond, as in quicker. And I'd love to hear from you guys if you do achieve those. If you found anything useful in this video, then please do give it a thumbs up and leave some comments below. But the key thing, the key takeaway from all those points is enjoy the process. It can be a long process. It could take months and months or years to get to those times or to run quicker than you are at the moment. If you find things are plateauing or not, and you're not improving, then look at the training plan and look at things that may change. But our bodies go through cycles anyway, so sometimes we do have a natural cycl cyclical where we do plateau. And sometimes we may go in reverse, but if you continue and persist with it, then the body then picks up goes off again. I may do a different video on that of showing those uh, cycles of uh, training but again there's, there's so much I could cover but this is just a quick summary top shell to help you guys run that sub 130 marathon and apparently for London Marathon qualifying for the ladies if you run a sub 130 half marathon you'll qualify as a championship place for the London Marathon none other yet yeah? And I think for the guys, it's sub 75 minutes, one hour 15. So if you run under that for the half marathon, you two for uh, qualify good for age in championship place for the London Marathon. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? So thank you all so much for watching. Really do appreciate the time that you've taken two world watches. Thumbs up. And I very much look forward to seeing you at the next Fast and Fun Run series and the next video that's coming up here on my channel. So without further ado, thank you so much and be seeing you.